joining us tonight. President Buhari salutes fallen heroes for your support for families. CBN grants over the counter withdrawal of new notes. While on the forensic and right groups call for release of detained South Sudan journalists. Good evening, and we're glad to have you join us on the major report. I am Olubomi Ajiboye Agbuola. President Mohamed Buhari has urged Nigerians to support the armed forces and other security agencies for their patriotic roles to secure the country. The president made the appeal during a special Jumat prayer held at the National Mosque Abuja to mark this year's Armed Forces Remembrance Day. President Buhari, represented by the Senate President Ahmad Lawan, said that the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and other security agencies are working hard to ensure that the country is secured and safe. He further stated, it is the duty of the citizenry to always pray for law enforcement agents and to give them the kind of support they need. The president urged Nigerians not to rate themselves by what outsiders tell them. Rather, they should copy what is good in other countries and leave out the bad ones. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari has directed speedy action to facilitate the establishment of a world-class transformer production plant in Nigeria to accelerate stable power supply. The Executive Vice Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, Professor Muhammad Haruna, disclosed this to newsmen in Abuja after he briefed the President on the agency's third quarter report from July to September 2022 with focus on its activities and finances. He further disclosed that the transformer production plant is in collaboration with China Great Wall Industry Corporation of China. Harana said further that the project for the establishment of the transformer manufacturing plant in the country is delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic in China. He said the plant, when established, would produce between 6.5 and 10 megawatts transformers of all sizes and different capacities to meet local demands and Nigerian standards. The Central Bank of Nigeria has ordered deposit money banks not to pay customers making over-the-counter withdrawals of new Naira notes again. The Apex Bank, however, directed the banks to load their automated teller machines with only new notes to ensure that the currency circulates across the nation ahead of January 31st, 2023 deadline, when the old notes will no longer be legal tender. It was gathered that the Apex Bank issued the directive to banks and ordered that the implementation must begin immediately and the commercial banks have a mandate to evacuate 1 billion Naira old notes each to the CBN on a daily basis. The memo, which was titled Project Update on Currency Redesign and signed by the group head Retail operations stated that the CBN has mandated that the banks immediately stop over the counter payment of the new 200 naira, 500 naira, and 1000 naira currency. Instead, all notes should be loaded into the ATMs for customer withdrawals. President Mohamed Buhari's new fiscal policy through cashless policy is capable of reshaping the socio-economic dimension of the country and as well go a long way to fighting corruption and crimes, especially kidnapping for ransom. A financial expert, Mr. David Sibalo, will drop the hint shortly after featuring on OSBC TV Current Affairs program, Saturday Morning Treat. He speaks further. I think the main focus of the government to using cashless policy is to even reduce crime. When people kill, when they kidnap anybody now, they say come and pay so 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 millions. They take that money to the bush. That money is not working for the economy. That money, but with the introduction of cashless policy, even if you want to pay ransom and you ask to transfer money, that money, that transfer is traceable, and they can trace it and get to where the money, or they can even stop that person from withdrawing such money. So it's of huge benefit to us as a Nigeria. Speaking on the rising debt profile of Nigeria, 
Mr. Balogo said borrowing would be better if it is channeled towards developmental projects such as agriculture, education, security, or welfare of the people. According to him, Nigerians should ask questions about the spending of money borrowed by their representatives in government. He speaks again. Deficit budgeting can assist the government uh, in the area of uh, doing all developmental efforts. For example, the construction of road, rail system, and other things. Those are what they can use the money on. But the issue is that that money, they are going to source it from somewhere. And when they source it from somewhere, it means they are going to pay a kind of interest or whatever that money is to make that money to be increasing. But if the money is well utilized, if it's judicially spent, that money can create money to repay such debt. Governor of Borono State, Professor Abandana Zulum, has assured that there will be no cause for alarm conducting the, the general elections in the state as the security situation has already improved to 90% stability. Professor Zulum, who gave the assurance while speaking to state journalists after meeting with the President Buhari at the presidential villa Abuja, also gave a progress report on the rehabilitation and resettlement process for the internally displaced persons in the state. Speaking on the security situation in Borno State, Professor Zulum said, though there is no place without some level of security challenge, Borno State government had received support from the federal government and the military, adding that much progress had been made at restoring the state to its former peaceful state. He pointed out that eligible voters can cast their votes on election day, as workable security apparatus have been put in place to foster lawlessness in the state. Lent the voices to the controversy surrounding the endorsement of the presidential candidates of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, by former President Olusegun Obasanjo, saying it shows democracy is at work in Nigeria. Those who spoke in separate interviews with OSB seniors noted that everyone has a right to own an opinion. Oluchi Amoda reports. The general elections in Nigeria is some weeks away, and political parties and their candidates are crisscrossing the length and breadth of the country, selling their manifestos to the people with the sole intention of winning their votes. However, the tension that seems to be pervading the political terrain was further heightened a few days ago when former President Olushe Goba Sonjo publicly endorsed the candidacy of Mr. Peter Obi of the Labour Party. The endorsement has continued to generate reactions among the political gladiators. While some expressed support for the choice of the former president, others described it as inconsequential. Reacting to this development, a stalwart of the People's Democratic Party PDP, Chief Ebenezer Babatokwe stated that the adoption of Mr. Peter Obi by Chief Obasan just shows that democratic governance is at work in Nigeria and everyone has the freedom to choose whom to vote for. Nothing abnormal about OPG announcing adoption of Peter Obi as candidate. It has democracy at work. But we of the PDP, the People's Democratic Party, we have members. We have our candidate. We are backing our candidate. We are campaigning for our candidate. And by the of what we're going to vote for our candidates. Speaking in the same vein, a stalwart of the All Progressives Congress APC in Ocean State, Honorable Akintola Omonoye, maintained that only the votes of the majority of the electorate will decide who becomes the next president of Nigeria. When you say you endorse candidate of a given party, who does not carry the weight you attach to such a person? You are wasting your time. However, everyone is entitled to his own opinion or own opinion at a point in time. Uh, if Baba or whosoever has actually pointed to some people that this is my choice, you know, you, you don't need fighting such a person. Uh, let, let us actually prepare ourselves. Let Nigerians actually go and collect their PVC and exercise their civic rights. The door of Chief Baba Tokpe and Honorable Molaoye, however, urged all eligible voters to get their permanent voters card, PVCs, 
which is the only way they can vote in the candidates of their choice come February 25, 2023. Onuchi Amuda. Endorsements of a candidate either by group or individual is an exercise of rights which does not determine the victory of such candidates in the election. A political scientist, Mr. Nikon Goyen, said this shortly after playing a, a guest on OSBC TV current affairs program Saturday morning trade. According to him, the Nigerian big wigs will do better if they can concentrate on playing the role of national leaders instead of throwing their weight behind a particular political camp. He speaks. By a job, it's been regarded as an elderly, elder statement that should try as much as possible to work together, to harmonize, to synchronize all the political or the divergent views of the political aspirant and bring them to the table and tell Nigeria these are the things they want to do. You can organize just like uh, uh, Abu Bakr is doing. He has a peace movement in Nigeria. Before the election, they have to sign. Then you have to go and pray for Nigeria. I think of our job rather than coming up with uh, one candidate or the other today, he should find a way. He has the way with that. He can call all of them, come to Abekuta. I, I want to say that all the present people will be present there. Bring all the academia, bring all the uh, captains of industries in Nigeria. Let them educate this aspirant how to go about it, how to solve the problems of Nigeria. Or as for the security, bring all the serving chiefs and what have you. Let them discuss. The Nigerian Correctional Service has received a security sector grant of 500 million naira. This was contained in a release signed by the Assistant Superintendent of Corrections, Franka Awa. The grant was presented by the Abdus Massad Rabi Initiative for Africa as part of our social development program. The Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of the Initiative, Dr. Ubon Udo, said the organization is set up as a vehicle to create a platform where Nigerians and Africans can take responsibility to solve their own developmental problems by looking inwards. The initiative says it will continue to thrive in three thematic areas, which include health, education, and social development. The Initiative for Africa promised to expand the service by employing more technology to make the service at par with international correctional centers in developed countries. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control says the death toll from the Lassa fever outbreak in Nigeria in 2022 is 189. The situation report by the National Health Agency also showed that the confirmed cases for last year are now 1,067, with the suspected cases 8,202 across 112 local government areas and 27 states. The 52nd week report from December 26 to January 1, 2023, recorded the number of new confirmed cases decreasing from 17, with reports from Edo, Eboy, and Benue State. It also revealed that 63 health care workers were infected by the disease. According to the World Health Organization, Lassa fever is known to be endemic in Benin, Ghana, Guinea, Liberia, Mali, Sierra Leone. Togo, Nigeria, and some other West African countries. Meanwhile, National Lassa Fever Multi Partner Multi Sectoral Technical Working Group continues to coordinate the response activities at all levels in combating the deadly disease in the country. You are welcome to our sports segment. World number 173, Kimberly Birrell, has taken the wild card place of Venus Williams at the Australian Open after the seven-time singles Grand Slam champion withdrew from the tournament after suffering from an undisclosed injury at a warm-up tourney in Auckland. On Motayo Adebodo has the details of this story and more. 
Novak Djokovic's preparation for the Australian Open continued as he beat world number seven Danny Medvedev to reach the Adelaide International Finals. The 35-year-old is here to drop his set in Adelaide, beating Medvedev 6-3-6-4. Djokovic will face American Sebastian Koda in tomorrow's final. The Australian Open begins on the 16th of January and Djokovic is targeting a 10th title in Melbourne, which could be a men's record equaling 22nd Grand Slam win. Also, Venus Williams has withdrawn from this month's Australian Open after sustaining an injury at the warm-up tournament. The 42-year-old had been awarded a white card for the Grand Slam, which begins on the 16th of this month in Melbourne. William was injured during the ASB Classic in Auckland. There are doubts over world number one, Iga Swatek's fitness after she withdrew from the Adelaide International WTA 500 next week. Holland Swatek, who is 21 years, has a problem with her right shoulder. It remains to be seen whether British number one, Emma Raducanu, will compete at the Australian Open after she rolled her ankle at the ASB Classic on Thursday. In the meantime, Didat Deschamps has extended his contract as France head coach until June 2026 and is expected to remain in charge for a fourth World Cup. He led France to the World Cup victory in 2018 and to the finals in 2022 in Qatar, which they lost to Argentina. Since the 54-year-old former Chelsea midfielder took charge in 2012, France have also reached the 2014 World Cup quarterfinals and the 2016 Euros finals. The Daddy Champ has won 89, drawn 28, and lost 22 of his 139 matches in charge. The Champ, who also won the World Cup as a player in 1996, helped France win the Nations League in 2021. Meanwhile, Chelsea Edward Mendy has had surgery on a fractured finger he suffered in training this week. The Senegal keeper, who is 30 years, has not played for the Blues since returning from the World Cup because of a shoulder injury he sustained in Qatar, where they lost in the last 16 to England. Spain's keeper Ariza Balaga has deputized for Chelsea's past three games. Chelsea are tenth in the Premier League after Thursday's 1-0 loss to Manchester City. They will face City again in the FA Cup third round tomorrow. Or Montayo Adebodo. While on the foreign scene, Indian rights groups have called for South Sudanese authorities to release six journalists detained after footage was leaked, reportedly showing President Sarawa Kiri urinating on himself. Kayabi Adebayo has the rest of this and more. According to the Committee for Protection of Journalists, citing media reports and other sources familiar with the case, the staff with the state-run South Sudan Broadcasting Corporation were arrested by agents from the National Security Service. They are under investigation over a video that went viral on social media in December, which appeared to show the South Sudan President Salva Key urinating on himself at an official function. CPJ's Sub-Saharan African representative Otoki Mumo said that the arrest matched a pattern of security personnel resorting to arbitrary detention whenever officials deem coverage uncoverable. The body said the authorities should unconditionally release the six SSBC employees and ensure that they can work without further intimidation or threat of arrest. The Union of Journalists of South Sudan also called for a speedy conclusion of the investigation into the six who it said were suspected of having knowledge of the release of certain footage to the public. Iran has executed two men for killing a paramilitary force member during unprecedented protests sparked by the death in custody of a young woman. The latest hangings doubled the number of executions to four over the nationwide protests, which escalated since mid-September into calls for an end to Iran's clerical regime. Two men were put to death in December, sparking global outrage and new Western sanctions against Iran. It was gathered at Mohammed Mehdi Karami and said Mohammed Hussein, the main perpetrators of the crime that led to the martyrdom of Rola Ajamian, were hanged today. Director of Oslo-based group Iran Human Rights, Mahmoud Ami Mugdam, said both men were subjected to torture, sentenced after sham trials without the minimum standards for due process. Ami Mugdam, like other activists, called for stronger international action after the latest executions. Prosecutor said the 27-year-old militia man was stripped naked and killed by a group of mourners who had been paying tribute to a slain protester, Hadis Ajavi. The executions come in defiance of a campaign by international rights groups 
for the lives of the two men to be spared. Karani's father had also begged the judiciary not to kill his son. At least 29 people were killed during the bloody operation to arrest the son of Mexican drug kingpin, El Chapo, according to the defense minister, Luis Crescencio, Ovidio Guzman Lopez, aged 32, alleged to be a leader of his father's former cartel, was captured in Kulakian and flown to Mexico City. But during and after the arrest, 10 soldiers and 9 suspects were killed. 35 military personnel were injured and 21 gunmen were arrested as furious gang members set roadblocks, set fire to dozens of vehicles and attacked planes at the local airport. Mr. Guzman Lopez was extracted by helicopter and flown to the capital before being taken to a maximum security federal prison. He is accused of leading a faction of his father's notorious Sinaloa cartel, one of the largest drug trafficking organizations in the world. His father, Jacqueline El Chapo Guzman, is serving a life sentence in the United States after being found guilty in 2019 of drug trafficking and money laundering. Coyote Adibayo, OSBC News. And to end the major reports, here's a recap of some of the top stories. President Mohamed Ibrahim has saluted fallen heroes, urging Nigerians to support the armed forces and other security agencies for their patriotic roles to secure the country. We also reported that the Central Bank of Nigeria has ordered deposit money banks not to pay customers making over-the-counter withdrawals of new notes again. While on the foreign scene, we reported that media rights groups have called for South Sudanese authorities to release journalists detained after footage was leaked reportedly showing President Salva Kuh urinating on himself. And that ends the major report on OSBC TV. It was Edited by Kayode Adibayo, I am Mulubumi Ajibuye Abola, wishing you a something. <laughs> Thank you.